What's going on guys? Oregon Motorcycle back. Today we are talking about the new Yamaha motorcycle that's not even out yet. Um, it is being produced. Uh, there's going to be some people testing it here pretty soon or maybe there's already a couple people that are testing it. You guys, I'm talking today about the new 2022 Yamaha R7 and in today's video I'm going to give you guys my thoughts my opinions and I'm going to ask for you guys' opinions on this bike It's kind of like a new um, segment into motorcycles. I'm going to tell you guys all about it in this episode So here we go So what better bike to go talk about the new Yamaha on than my Yamaha? And that is the YSR. All right, what's going on everybody? It's a Friday afternoon. And uh, let's see, get this thing started here. Turn my fuel on, ignition's on, clutch in. Gotta love that first kick stuff. Woo. All right, let's go. So yeah, uh, it's Friday. It's a little gloomy today, but it's it's not that bad of a day here. And, woo, yeah, here in Oregon City. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I'm out of weed. So we're gonna stop by the weed store right here. I'm gonna show you guys my favorite weed store or marijuana shop or dispensary, whatever you guys call it. Right here in Oregon City. I'll try an eighth of the tarantula. I want to get some edibles. Get edibles? Yeah. So my buddy came in here and he bought some like some gummies. I don't have no idea what they were. No, there was a bunch in a package. I was thinking it was like darker color, maybe blackish, and they look like little crosses. No, I'm good. Awesome. Thank you. You too. Alrighty, this is Cannabis Nation, and it's right here. I guess this is Main Street or whatever. We're basically just downtown right there. Um, this is my favorite dispensary here in Oregon City because everybody that works here is super, super nice, and they never complain about me coming in with my helmet on like some other dispensaries do, and this place has a point system. Um, um, so, like, you acquire points, and you get free merchandise and all that stuff, which is... It's kind of cool, you know, so yeah, it's time to talk about the R7. Am I still filming? On, on, first kick again, yeah, two smoke, baby. All right, where should we go? Where should we go? So the reason I'm doing this video, you guys, is because, uh, uh, there's actually quite a bit of content coming out on this bike already and I am I am for one kind of excited about it and uh, I want to talk about it and uh, so I've seen kind of like some mixed interpretations about this bike and uh, 
some people kind of scratching their head and then other people are really super excited about it like I am and uh, you know it's this is this is kind of a unique bike you guys because it's it's not the first one of its kind um, but I would say like it's the first one from Yamaha of its kind. And I'd say the first one of this kind would be the 660, right? I, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the Aprilia 660, but um, these, what we're talking about today, folks, is twin cylinders, inline twins, not like a V-twin or something, but inline twins or parallel twins, whatever you want to call them, uh, in a sport bike type of chassis with, you know, full fairings and, and all that kind of stuff. And this to me is, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a new concept it's not a new concept in the motorcycle world obviously they you know they got the mt07 and the mt09 or i'm sorry not the mt09 the mt07 and um you know those naked naked type of bikes but we haven't seen at least i'm not aware of a you know a twin a parallel twin sport bike um that you can buy factory okay so now the reason why I think this is such a big deal is because I feel that this could possibly start maybe a new trend in motorcycling. Kind of like the adventure bikes did, you know, um, there was, it was like a hot thing, you know, the adventure bike thing. Maybe it still is, I don't know, but I feel that this type of bike is going to check a lot of boxes for a lot of riders and it's going to be a very, very usable bike, okay? And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by usable. Uh, so, for instance, when I rode my buddy's uh, Speed Triple, you know, that bike puts out, I think, a little over 150 horsepower, okay? And I rode it in the twisties, and I didn't, uh, I didn't really use any gears. Like, I was, I stayed in third gear, and it just was like having a blast in third gear. And if you look at some of these leader bikes, you know, some of these leader bikes, they'll do ah, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour in first gear. So if you look at things from an awkward point of view, you could say, well, I guess you don't need, you know, second, third and fourth and fifth gears. You could just run around all day in first gear and like still have plenty of room left to speed just by using first gear. And that's what I mean by it's not usable on the street. And I think, so this is my opinion, guys. Just remember, these are all my opinions. Don't start getting all butt hurt and everything. The thing with these like this this fad going on right now where we have these 180 horsepower and these 200 horsepower bikes and people just sitting there drooling over them, you know, it, uh, it's, it's nonsense. <laughs> so it's simply there to have a street legal bike that has that kind of power. That's simply for bragging rights. You can't use 200 horsepower on the street and you guys can barely use 100 horsepower on the street, okay? So... When we start looking at these bikes and we're like, oh man, the new R7, it's barely got 70 horsepower. What am I gonna do with that thing, you know? And you guys know from watching my videos that it's not about horsepower, it's about skill when it comes to street riding. And that's what this bike's designed for. It's designed for street riding. And um, I feel like this is a bike that you can actually get out and use properly on the streets and have fun with it. And at the same time, this bike is coming in under $10,000. I think it's MSRP and right above nine, which is, in my opinion, spectacular. I was keeping my fingers crossed it was gonna be under 10 grand because yeah, I might entertain the idea of uh, picking one of these bikes up, actually. I am gonna be most likely purchasing a sport bike um, after my Honda's paid off. And I've got three on the list right now, and this bike's on the list. So, and it's after I've done a little more reading on it and it's like a little bit higher on the list now, you know? So yeah, guys, this bike's putting out just over 70 horsepower and just right at 50 foot pounds of torque. And if you guys want to compare this bike, I know some of you guys are trying to compare it to the R6 and it's, you know, I, I feel it's kind of in a different realm, right? Uh, it's not really in the same class of bike. So I think com kind of comparing the two is not really, you know, I don't think it's a good comparison to tell you the truth. Uh, completely different engines. Uh, you could say completely different chassis. You know, and it's just a, it's a different setup. The R7, you guys, is a street bike. The R6 is a race bike. You know, I had one. They're awesome bikes. I would love to have another one. But 
they're not really that usable on the street and that's kind of what this video is about is like a motorcycle being usable on the street and i truly feel that the r7 is going to be 100 percent usable on the street it's going to be a bike that you can get on and ride fast and keep up with people and have the power to do what you need to do on the street but it's not going to be some monster that costs twenty five thousand dollars that you're going to cry when you drop it you know what i mean um this is a bike you can just get out and and just just ride it to the wheels fall off you know that's kind of what i'm getting getting out of this um if it's a bike that i buy i would seriously just ride the wheels off of it that's all i would do i wouldn't care and i wouldn't care if it got scratched dropped cracked i wouldn't care now on the other side of this it's kind of funny because i was talking to another youtuber about this today you know if i were to buy a, a ducati v2 which is on my list i wouldn't ride that bike the same i'm just i'm gonna tell you right now you know i just i just wouldn't ride it the same and you know maybe some of you ducati owners could chime in maybe you guys own a yamaha and a ducati do you guys ride your ducati the same as a yamaha or do you care i mean i don't know i think i would baby my ducati a little bit more and be a little more concerned with dropping it and whatnot and be more concerned with keeping it clean and nice and shiny and stuff you know and um you know a yamaha is a yamaha <laughs> it's just a run-of-the-mill motorcycle uh they're great bikes but a ducati i think is something special you know and and i i'm not trying to compare the v2 to the r7 you guys i'm just saying that you know these are some bikes on my list that i'm looking at and i would really like to have that aprilia uh, 660 but the 660 is checking all the boxes except for the price and uh i, I in my opinion i think the aprilia is a little overpriced um for, for what you're getting and i know you're getting a, you know it's a nice bike it's an italian bike with a host of electronic features and it's it's got a whopping 100 horsepower when you compare that to the r7 with only about 70 you know eh, you know comes back to you get what you pay for but going back to this twin cylinders you know parallel twin uh setup in a sport bike you guys these are the only two bikes right now that i'm aware of that are on the market like that well the r7 is not on the market yet but it will be soon uh these are the only two right now that i'm, I'm aware of um that are going to be in this realm and these are you know just like i said these are just my opinions about how this bike will affect the market and and uh you know be better for motorcycling in general because we have these options you know that we can that we can hop on because like think of a, a guy that wants to get into motorcycling he wants to go buy a sport bike right and let's just say that he's dead set against an r3 well the next thing to uh you know the, the next step up would have been the r6 or you know the r1 and what is the r6 what was it msrp for before they stopped making it in 2020 i rode a 2020 r6 uh i think the msrp was over twelve thousand dollars so these this r7 is coming in a lot cheaper a lot easier to ride and it would be a lot better of an introduction to somebody who was dead set against an r3 i know some of you guys are like you know, I'm just not gonna do the R3, and that that's fine. That's understandable. Um, so maybe this bike will fill that void for those people. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm excited about it. I would probably go in and put a deposit down on it right now if I didn't have my current bike payment. But I'm not gonna go out and get uh, two bike payments right now. I have a car payment. <laughs> Maybe if I didn't have a car payment, I would, but... Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to hold off on that for a while, you guys. Uh, I'm not definitely not trading in my, uh, my CBX for anything. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, guys. Give me your thoughts on this new R7 that's coming out. Give me your thoughts on parallel inline twin motorcycles in a sport bike package. And, uh, well, you know, a couple of things, too, guys. Um, there's been a lot of comparison between this bike and the mt07 and make no mistake this bike has completely different suspension has a completely different frame has a completely different rake so it's a completely different bike it just is basically sharing the same name as yamaha and the same motor and i don't know about the tuning of the motor yet if they have changed the tune on it compared to the mt07 but i know they've changed the gear ratio and what they've done is they've from what I've read, they've made the gear ratio a little bit lower on the R7 to give it a little better acceleration, which would be awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's this is this is a good thing. This is a real good thing, guys. 
So I would love your opinions and I love your thoughts and all that stuff. And if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, folks. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers right here on Oregon Motorcycle. Coming to you straight out of Oregon City, baby. Whew. I guess that's it. I guess it's time to uh, go home and edit. And um, I think I'm going to have a beer while I edit. <clears throat> I should stop here. But I don't know. Every time I get on this bike and like I go do something, I just want to keep riding it. But I got things to do. So until next time, folks, Oregon Motorcycle.